Hi, my name is Katie and my channel is so tattered and I am throwing in an extra video. This one's going to be about quilting. Um, I mainly do videos about cross stitch with quilting and wool applique at the end, but um, I haven't done a typical or my regular floss tube in a while, so I thought I would do a video just for quilting. I have people who follow me who do not cross stitch, that they just um, watch my videos for the qu the quilting and so I thought I would do this video just for you guys or just if anybody just wants to watch. <laughs> um, I know I like to watch videos on hobbies that I'm interested in but haven't really figured out. Um, but so for anybody who's here who's typically who does not watch me because they don't watch my floss tubes, um, my name is Katie and I've been married 24 years and I have two adult sons and um, I have been sewing quilting for over 10 years and um, it's definitely my favorite hobby of my hobbies and I have such a love for reproduction fabrics, um, old antique quilts, um, antiques in general, I love all things old <laughs> and uh, so this is just something that it, I have a huge passion for and it's a great creative outlet for me and so um, if you haven't been here before to see my videos thank you for watching my video and I hope that something will inspire you um, so I guess what I'm going to start with is um, I want to talk a little bit about the quilt retreat that I went to a couple weeks ago um, I went to a quilt retreat my mom and I went for our first one it was at boxcar quilts and um, it is in Aubrey, Texas, and the host was Jana, and she was lovely. Um, I really enjoyed the setup. I enjoyed the setup was amazing. It was they thought of everything, and then Jana is the perfect host because she just she made you feel so at home and and at ease, and it was fun and uh, very relaxing, and I. If you get a chance to go to a retreat at Boxcar, I highly recommend it because it is an amazing atmosphere. And uh, they've done a really great job um, just meeting all your needs. And uh, so my mom and I had a lot of fun and uh, I was inspired by all the things that the women were working on. Um, I've been to a cross-stitch retreat and uh, I get nothing done. I hardly stitch at all because I'm too busy chatting and you know, looking and seeing what everybody's working on that I don't ever, you know, feel accomplished after I've left there. I just feel full of socialization. <laughs> so um, with the quilt retreat, it was quite different. Um, I got a lot done. Uh, it was it was fun to feel productive for a weekend because, you know, at home when I have a weekend of nothing but sewing, I get a ton done and it's very rewarding. And I thought at this retreat, I was like, oh, I'm not getting anything done, but at least I'll meet some new friends and have a good time. I did both. I got it all done. I got things done and I got to meet new people and friends and I had a blast. And so I highly recommend them if you ever want to go to a quilt retreat or get the opportunity, especially at Boxcar, you should definitely go. It's it's quite an experience. Um, but so that was great fun for me. And um, okay, so with my, like my cross stitch, Quilting's kind of the same. I get excited about new projects. I start new projects, and then I kind of, you know, s stop working on them as hard. <laughs> and then they just get love here and there. Um, but I'd say I'm more, I'm better about finishing quilts than I am with my cross stitch projects or even wool applique or anything. Quilts, I love to see them through and have them on my couch to cuddle up in or to give them as gifts. I do give quilts as gifts. Um, so things like that just uh, really help me to get through it. Usually if I don't have a quilt finished and it lingers for a while, it's because I've ran into a problem or it wasn't as fun as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> or I didn't love those fabrics as much as I thought I was or something like that. Um, but I'm typically pretty good about getting them done. And so, uh, but I do have a few things that I love and things that I don't love that much, but things that I do love that need to get done. And, uh, I think I'm going to go with my oldest one. I don't have dates on these. I was not good about that. Um, uh, 
when I first started quilting and that is something that I'm going to do a lot better which I think Instagram has really helped me with. I hadn't, I've only been on Instagram for I think it's been less than a year and so now it's it's nice because I'm starting to be able to document those you know on my page and everything so it's nice to be able to go back to those but if it was before I got on Instagram I probably have no idea about anything. <laughs> so um, the first one I'm going to talk about is something I started with uh, Pat Sloan, who uh, if you don't watch her, which I I think you probably do if you're watching a quilting video, you probably watch Pat Sloan. She is so fun. She does videos almost every single day. Um, we don't have the same style of fabrics and things like that, but we do, um, we both love quilting. <laughs> and she's a fabric designer, quilt designer, she has tons of books. She's amazing and fun to watch. And she, for a minute there, I was, every time she wanted to start something, I was starting it and I, it was too much. I don't, she's really good at being able to do that. I can't do that. Um, but she was starting Summer Moon Block of the Month. And it's a book that was put out with all these fun, pretty colors. And um, it's by Carrie Nelson. But she was she did hers in Midnight Moon, which were it was the um, like Halloween colors. And I thought, well, I don't want to do Halloween colors. I wanted to do something different. So I went with um, I call this my mom quilt because when I was a kid, uh, my mom, we moved into a new house when I was like in third grade and everything was pink and green. Green carpet, like that mint green carpet, pink curtains, pink and green couch, Christmas tree, pink and green, everything was pink and green. She would collect that uh, depression glass, it was the, the pink with the green stem. I mean, it was pink and green everywhere. So I had this idea, I'll make a summer moon block of the month with pinks and greens. <laughs> I made it to week six and then out of, I think, 15 weeks. And yeah, I have a lot more to do. And I hadn't worked on it in a very long time. And then um, when I went to the quilt retreat at Boxcar, I picked it up and thought, oh, I'll get some of these done. I really want to get this quilt done. Not only because I think it's going to be beautiful and I'm excited about it, but I have all my pinks, greens, and creams that I want to put into this quilt in this big basket. So not only does this big basket take up a lot of room, it's got beautiful fabrics in it that I would like to use for other things. You know, all these Civil War reproduction fabrics that are beautiful, that would be beautiful in other projects. But they can't be until I'm done with this quilt. And so I'm a starcher. I starch everything. So everything in that basket is starched and ready to go. And so I need to get on it. <laughs> but so I'll show you just a few of the blocks that I've done. Um, they come in three sizes. This is a really fun one to do because it's the, it's one block, three different sizes. Um, these are the ones that I made at Boxcar but there are three sizes of each block. And so, but aren't they cute? And I love them and I enjoy working on it. This isn't one of those ones where I'm like, oh, this isn't, no, I love this. <laughs> it's just a lot of work. And oh, look at this one, it's so tiny. But they're, they're tons of fun to make. Um, I'm, I still, I'm loving these colors. They're from some of my favorite designers. Um, they're just a joy. So I will eventually, I'm going to make it more of an effort to get these done so I can get this quilt made. Um, yeah, so those are the ones that I have finished. And so I'm going to be working on this more. And I think I finished four blocks while I was at Boxcar, which felt really good. And so that is a focus quilt for me this year. I want to get that one done, preferably before summer, because that would be ideal. Um, that way I can use it. But um, I don't know, that's a lot of blocks to get done before summer. So that's definitely, we'll see how it goes. Um, 
But yes, oh, and then I have like the next block saw. I like to get them cut out and put on these boards and then I put like a little post-it saying which block it's for. So I have a whole nother week that's already all cut and ready to go that I need to get put together. Um, so that's one of my UFOs. Um, another one that I've been working on, let's see, that I love and I'm not, it's not that, I don't love it, it's that I love it and I just, this one has wool applique in the quilt so it's hand stitching and so I find myself with hand stitching when I have hand stitching projects I end up cross stitching instead. That's the truth of it. But this one is in this book, uh, Simple Harvest by Kim Deal. And uh, she's amazing. She is a quilt designer, uh, fabric designer, and every single thing in this book I want to make. But this is um, the one I'm working on. And um, I haven't fully decided if I'm going to do that outer border of this one. But I have everything already made for this part. But I just, I don't know how far I'm going to go or what I'm going to do. Because I'm really loving the size that it already is for what I want it for. So I'm not really sure. But this is where I'm at. And so last time I showed this on my floss tube, I was doing the, the stitching. And I'm still doing that. <laughs> I've got a ways to go. I only have one corner done. But um, this has been a lot of learning because I haven't done, I've done lots of wool applique, I haven't done it in a quilt. And so I've been a little nervous too because it's like, well, when it's done, then what? And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand quilt this one when I'm finished with it. But it, I have all the pieces. These were all just, those were mainly Kim Deal fabrics, but um, a lot of them are from the scraps that I had. Um, in my scrap bin and whatnot, but I have the, you know, like the flying geese. I have them all made and I keep them in this little box, uh, bag. And that goes up on my design wall with that because I don't want to fold that one up because all the wool, so it's lays, um, it's pinned up on a design wall with that bag. So I don't lose it because I have already lost those pieces once <laughs> and that's not good. Um, so that is one of my other projects that I've been working on. Another one that I've been working on is by Primitive Gatherings. And it's from the book Joyful Gatherings. And um, I bought this as a kit. I don't buy a lot of kits. Um, but when I see something that I think, oh, that's, I want that quilt exactly, then I'll buy it. Um, but it's to make this quilt and this one it took me forever to cut all these pieces there's so many pieces in this quilt and then um, I finally I got one quilt block done and um, it was a little more challenging than I thought it was going to be because it doesn't, it gives you some instructions on some of the seams, which way to press, but not all of them. And so I know everybody's got different opinions about open seams and then also the spinning, the, the intersections and all that. And so I don't know. I think what I've decided is I'm just going to open seams because it just, I just like open seams. The only thing I don't like about open seams is that, um, because there is some bulk in, the, in these, and I know I could spin the things, and but I'm just... Um, I like nesting, and you can't really do that as well with, with pressed, when you press open, but I'm going to get it done. It's going to be fine. It's going to be amazing. I've made enough quilts. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I don't. But I, I cut all of those. There are these two huge boards that I had in my sewing room laid out, cut up pieces, and blocks and I'm thinking I don't have room for this board it's gonna fall over and I'm gonna be upset when all my pieces end up on the floor which has happened to me before so I put them all in little bags so each one of these has a block in it you know so I've put them all together and so made it really easy all I need to do is pull one out and stitch together 
And so that is something that I told myself I was going to do a, two blocks a, a month. And I've done zero blocks for the month of January. It's fine. It'll be fine. I'll get it done. <laughs> I'll get it done in due time. But yeah, it is in this huge box. That's how many blocks there are. That's how much fabric there is. There's the, for the, um, what is that? That's just extra fabric. But yeah, all of it is in here. That's a good thing about um, Primitive Gatherings. They did give me some extra fabric and whatnot. So, because I did mess up one of my cuts. So that was nice. But yeah, all starched, ready to go. And I just need to pull out the baggies and sew them together. So that's another one that I'm working on. This one, I guess I started so long ago, I don't even remember starting this one. I just found it in my sewing room when I was going through and trying to organize things. And I was like, oh man, I don't even remember what I was making this for or anything. They're not my colors, so I feel like I was probably had it in mind for somebody. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I should write these things down and then I would know. But it's uh, in this book, well it's in two books that I had which was kind of funny, but um, it's in the 101 Fab Small Quilt book and it's also in this Back to Charm School book. And this is from um, Country Threads and I have many of their books, but uh, this one is so cute. I loved all the little squares. Never leave the table before the other guest. That's the name of the, the quilt. Isn't that adorable? And I love these colors, and that's more of what would be my colors. But So I feel like I was making this for somebody who never got it, which is just sad. Um, but So I started making the blocks, and this is uh, Minnick and Simpson uh, fabrics. And I just, man, they're so cute, these little bitty blocks. And then I have many pieces cut out on the board. So I don't know if this is the rest of them or if I need more, but I can't even tell you what's in here. It's, I, I feel like it's a mix of jelly rolls and this is, what is it, Northport? What's the name of the collection? But I, I feel like, okay, well, I have strips, so it was a jelly roll. But then I also have layer cake size. So I, I don't even remember. Isn't that terrible? But it's going to be cute. But I think this is one of those ones where I'm like, well, I didn't. What's this one? Yeah, I, I guess I just didn't. I forgot. I don't know. I'm going to finish it. And it'll probably get pulled out this summer because it's nice patriotic colors and whatnot. And then um, maybe by then it'll it'll click who I was going to make that for. <laughs> I know I made something similar for my grandmother. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it was to match the quilt that I made her. I don't even know. Not really sew-alongs, but one of those you just do throughout the year. But it was uh, from the Fat Quarter Fat fat quarter shop and they were doing um, brick house and I love a house block and uh, it came in different sizes and it was uh, something they put together to use up your scraps and I have a ton of scraps so I thought oh perfect I love house blocks and then I have a ton of scraps so I'm going to do this and I guess for the size I was going to do it's a 4x4 four four blocks and it finishes at 62 and, um, so I, <laughs> I cut up all my scraps and got them on these little boards and was all like, and then I got this big one in here and I you know I had things to do and, uh, I keep them in, I have all different kinds of these boxes. I think these are for scrapbooks, scrapbooking, but that's usually what I keep my projects in. And then, uh, so I... So 16 blocks, I got three done. <laughs> I got three blocks done before I lost interest. And these, um, yeah, stuff I just got out of my scraps. And I think it's going to be really cute when I finish. 
So I think I'm going to love this. I just need to get it finished so I can love it in a whole piece. <laughs> Not just in a box that I pull out every once in a while. So um, I'll, I'll work on this one again. Plus I already have all those pieces cut out. I kind of was on the fence about it when I came across it and thought, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I'm like, I already cut the pieces. It would be so silly just to put all those in my scrap bin when they have a purpose because they're a certain size. So I'm going to keep with it. I'm going to love it. I know I will. Okay. Okay, so the other one that I'm working on is... I know I was inspired by something I saw on Instagram. I don't know who it was. And then I tried to get the book... I don't even remember what book it was. I think I'll do better this year. I'm going to write it all down. Uh, and it was a hexi project. Um, I've done a few hexies. I've done several hexi quilts that have gotten very large and then gotten taken to Goodwill. That's terrible, I know. But, um, you know, your taste and things change or it wasn't what you thought it was going to be and better for someone else to do it. So, um, but this one I love and this one I'm going to finish. I don't know how many I'll get done, but I'm definitely going to make it into a quilt. I will be keeping this one. <laughs> and um, it's a hexi quilt, and I'm using, I'm doing the jelly roll method. So I had a jelly roll of um, Return to Elegance by Judy Rothamel. Um, and um, I love these fabrics. I love her. She's amazing. But I am using, I got these off of Amazon. And they are, it's 400, they're size one inch. I guess the one, one little size is one inch, but the entire hexi is two inch. I know that can be confusing because it was confused me when I was looking at them. Um, but, so they're just papers with the little holes in it, so it makes it easy to pop them out. So I made, I got this far. <laughs> I got this far, and again, it's because it's hand stitching, and I get into the cross stitch, and then that's what I do. So I'm thinking of putting myself on a schedule. I think I'll do better if I have like a set day that I do stitching, a hand um, stitching and sewing. So, and then I have, that's the last row on this. And then I haven't decided yet if I'm going to, um, I'm pretty sure I am, I'm going to do another um, of a background fabric. And then um, I already have the next block put together and pieces cut out and everything. And I just need to dedicate some time to stitch on it. Um, I really do enjoy it. It's fun and it's very rewarding when you get to pull out the pieces from the parts that you have finished. And uh, I really do love the hand sewing. It's very enjoyable and relaxing. And I just need to do more of that. And then that's all on the map. Okay, so this one is moving into more wool applique. Oh boy, yeah, I don't, I didn't get a lot of these done. Some of them I don't even know where, what book they came from. This is one of my oldest projects. Um, I think they call this honeycomb. And quite literally all I have left to do are these top ones right here. <laughs> I just need to stitch them down. So I need to get this one done and then um, put the border or the binding on it and all that stuff. And it'll be a cute little just something to throw on a table or something. Um, this one came out of this book. So this is Wool Applique Heirlooms and it's by, what's this by? Mary Blythe. Tons of great projects in this one. Um, when I put this together I was going to the beach and I thought oh I'll work on this on the beach I didn't but that's why I picked these beachy colors you see that? but there's also a version in here with the dark colors which I'm like oh I really should have done that <laughs> I mean that's beautiful so that's probably 
when I finish this one, I will then do that one. But yeah, I've got them mostly done. I, I'm almost done. It would <laughs> not take me that long to finish it. But yeah, I have, I have to stitch them down to the background. So silliness. I know, I know. Um, one that I haven't started yet that I am wanting to start, and I've had this put together for a while. It comes out of this book, Exploring Folk Art with Wool Applique and More, and it's by Rebecca L. Smith. There are amazing projects in here, and it, her daughter also, Kelsey uh, Ann Lee Smith. And the one I'm working on, or wanting to work on, is a place for pieces and it's basically a mat to put all your wool applique pieces in while you're working on a project so it'll look like this and you can put your pieces inside really beautiful so I'm excited to get that done and I have um, I've already picked out the wool I've picked out the fabric and then there's even some cross stitch in it so I have the linen picked out and everything so um, but this book is incredible there's so many things in here that I oh there's a big picture of it um, I have made let's see I know there's something in here that I have made my favorite wool applique projects that I have are from Rebecca um, she passed away a few years ago um, so um, but oh, where is it it was so cute well here's a big picture of it <laughs> I made this and it had sent this was my first attempt at punch needle and it was a lot of fun there's just a little punch needle down in these it was a little difficult for like the words on it but it's actually a lot of fun, and I should probably do some more punch needle, but I think it would be right up there with the hand sewing, <laughs> where I just don't get to it. Here is a picture of it. Isn't that cute? I love everything in here. There's rug cooking in here. Um, I'm going to show you the horse, because that's something else on my list that I wanted to get done. Oh, where did it go? Well, it basically looks like this one. So pretty. If you can find this book, I highly recommend it. There's just beautiful things in there. So those, see that's not that bad. Those are all the things that I am working on. Not working on, but have started and I'm keeping in the mix. Like I will get the I will get these things done for sure. Um so that's all of that. Just kidding. Okay, never mind. I do have one more thing I'm working on. And I'm actively working on it, so I'm surprised I was going to forget about it. Um, so I know a lot of people are doing the Tiny Nine Patch Challenge. Um, it's being hosted by Repro, Repro Quilt Lover on Instagram. And she took an antique quilt. And um, I think the sizes are one inch I'm not really sure they're tiny and um, so I thought oh my gosh I have all these one and a half inch strips and tons of scraps and I thought what a great way to use them and so I jumped in and um, so I were on week three so I have my week one and week two done and then um, I am working on the week three and it's no rules or anything you just uh, mine are gonna be mine are three inch finished and I'm just using whatever is in my scraps anything goes so these are for week three I have four more to make I think and then um, I've been just randomly cutting up things and putting them in here and it just makes it easy just to pull them and uh, this was something I worked on at retreat and I, I think I got like a whole week's work's <laughs> worth done while I was there. But that's what inspired me to put up this quilt. 
um, cause it'll be, it's on point like this one. This is one of my very favorite, uh, antique quilts that I purchased. My parents actually found it at an antique store and my mom, she's so cute. She'll always send me pictures of things that she finds and she's like, do you want this? And then my dad will hold them up and, you know, they take all these pictures so that I can decide yay or nay or whatnot. And this one I really, really loved. And, um, it's huge. Uh, but one of the things that I really loved about it is a lot of the antique quilts, they have the binding is the same color as the back or, you know, it's neutral. But this one had the cutest little binding on it and I can't really see it from there. But, uh, I love the colors. Um, I know some people would say this is a cutter quilt because it's got holes and stuff in it, but I don't. I love it. It's wonderful. <laughs> so hopefully mine will be like this one when I'm finished. Um, I don't remember where they finish at. I know they're bigger than mine. Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably a finished at four inches maybe, but I love that quilt. And so it's very inspiring to know that I will have made one just like it. And so this has been a really fun, tons of people on Instagram are doing it right now, this challenge. Um, I'll link some stuff below. Any Instagrams that I mention or anything, I'll link it all below. So the next thing I was going to talk about are, um, I guess I'll do haul next. Haul is something for you guys who don't watch cross stitch videos. Uh, they typically do something where they talk about things that they have acquired in the last time since they had done a video. And so I'm going to talk about a couple things that I had gotten. And, um, one thing I I received in the mail was um, it's this is Dinah's Delight by Betsy Chechian and she's one of my all time favorites. <laughs> I can't say that enough. I know I say it all the time, but she is she's one of my all time favorites and she makes the most beautiful reproduction fabrics, beautiful, and she has beautiful quilt patterns and I love her. Um, so this one is going to be perfect for spring. I haven't decided what I'm going to use it for, but I know I'm going to use it and love it. So I got that one. And another one of my very, very favorites is Pambuda, and she is Heart Spun Quilts. And this is the Peacemaker. And it's just got beautiful rainbows, rainbow of color, dark, bold, rich. I just, ugh, I love her fabrics. She's amazing. And so I got those. And then, um, oh, while well, I was at my quilt retreat, um, Jana, who hosted her gift to everybody, and that's something else you need to keep in mind. If you go to a quilt retreat, your table mates will make things. It's very sweet. And so just think of little ideas that you can bring. Um, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, um, our host, Jana, she made uh, us these little kits to make these pin cushions. And they're so fun. And, um, but it's foundation paper piecing. So, let's see. And I watched, um, I haven't, I have done foundation paper piecing, but it's been forever. And so I was watching her help her friend um, do one, and then I thought, oh, I can do that, but I'm going to need one of these. So I had to buy and add an eighth ruler, which goes with the whole process of making these. And then she gave us the filling for it and everything. So this came in the mail yesterday, so now I can make my. <laughs> I'm really excited to get that done, to have to remind me of my quilt retreat. Um, something that I ordered that came in the mail today and I was so excited that it came today so that I could throw it in this video before I uploaded it. Um, I follow The Quilt Barn on Instagram and she posted um, a quilt that used this pattern, Picnic. And she used, um, this is by Cluck Cluck So and it uses fat quarters and it comes in six different sizes. I love it when they do that because you can make it for whatever size you wanted to use it for, like a crib size, lap quilt, throw. And then um, she made it out of 
laundry, basket, quilts, um, crud, I have it, I love it, what is it called? Not Practical Magic, Primrose, and uh, it was beautiful, And but I thought, no, I have one that I think that would go, it would be more like the brights in this, but reproductions, and it's a Betsy Chechian one that I have, um, but yes, so I'm going to make this. So I, when I ordered this, um, I, of course, you know, you can't buy one thing. That would be sad. So I also ordered another one. It's Heart Spun Quilts um, quilt pattern, and it's called Crossfire. I love the colors in this and the pattern and everything. It's beautiful. I can't wait to make this one. Um, yes, Cambuda. And then um, another one that she had that I loved was Redwood Manor, also by Heart, Heart Spun Quilts. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness. I love it. <laughs> and so this was my first time ever ordering from her. I, I follow her shop on Instagram. I have for a while. But I had never ordered from her before, and so I did. And um, she get, she gave me the magnet for or being a first-time um, customer <laughs> words and then uh, she sent a card and not only is this card beautiful it was really sweet and completely unexpected and um, for those of you who watch me you know I love cards notes um, sometimes I have people will send me things and when they include a note it warms my heart I love it. It means a lot to me that they took the time to to write out something about them or, you know, just I love it. And so to get, it's a long note and I'm not going to read it because I didn't ask or anything, but it really warmed my heart. It was very sweet and I'm just thinking, <laughs> she doesn't know me, and um, but I, it was a very, very sweet card and so just thought that's so nice when and when a shop takes the time to do that it just means or when they like make it look really pretty and they send it to you I love that I love it so but that was a really sweet um, unexpected thing to get when I ordered from her they came really fast and so I love that because you know when you order something even though you know you're not gonna use it right away you want it right away <laughs> So that's just silly but that's just how it is and so I'm so excited to get those done um, those quilts kitted up with something. I like to do that. If I found a pattern that I really like, um, I'll kit it myself with things that I like. Um, so I have things in mind for those. Um, when I was at Boxcar, I picked up a couple things. This, <laughs> I like to make quilts for my great niece and, uh, I think it's fun for me because it's not, it's kind of out of my comfort zone of fabric choices and I couldn't resist this. Oh, you can see it. It's so cute. I don't know what you're seeing, but it's adorable. It's got horses, and I know she's only, what is she? She's going to be two pretty soon, and I know that um, her mama and her dad want her to be a cowgirl. <laughs> so, I don't know if she wants to be a cowgirl, but I know her parents would love for her to be a cowgirl, so I thought that would be fun. So I picked those up at Boxcar, that and the, the charm pack, and I'm going to make her something. And then, um, I think that's all I got for, like, quilting um, stuff I have is, um, if any of you guys live close to McKinney, McKinney, Texas, or you're visiting McKinney, Texas, you have to go to downtown dry goods. It is incredible quilt shop and yarn. They do a lot of yarn. They do. They have everything. They have some wool there. They have... Um, the floss for cross stitch. They have a lot of things. Um, but I went there and I know some of you guys that watch me have already seen this, but I picked up this pattern and um, it's American Jane Patterns and it's called Cherry Cherry Quilt. Cherry Cherry Quilt. <laughs> and um, this is not my colors or anything, but I thought it would be really pretty in colors that I like. And so while I was there, I picked up a whole bunch of fat quarters to make make it. So 
So it's just really pretty reproduction type fabrics. So I'm hoping to get a start on that. I got the border and all the stuff, so that's something that I really would like to get going soon. Okay, so I I think that's it. Um, I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed this quilt video. Um, I think I'm going to do another one. Don't hold me to anything I'm terrible at this, but I would like to do one about... Um, my favorite things that I use in my sewing room. I would, uh, once I, it's a mess in here. I'm not gonna, this is nice, but the rest of it is a mess. Um, there's parts of my sewing room that you can hardly even walk in. But, um, once I get it all clean and organized, I'd like to show my favorite things, like my favorite rulers and, um, things like that. Any kind of tidbits that I might have to help um, with, I have a lot of people tell me that they have trouble with being accurate and um, sewing straight lines and things like that. And I would really like to, I know everybody has a different way of doing things and I would just be showing you what works for me. It's probably not necessarily the right way or whatnot, but it's, uh, it's what I've learned that it clicks for me. Um, I also love to make bags. Um, I do a lot of project bags for cross stitch and that requires zippers and it took me forever to figure out what worked for me with, for zippers <laughs> and so just those kinds of things. I don't know. I'm throwing it out there. I might make a video about that. I don't know how interested anybody will be about with that stuff but um, so yeah that's it. So after this um, we'll just see how this one goes and um, if people like it better split up then maybe I can just start splitting these up um, if not I'll keep it all on my floss tube so if you see a floss tube come up and you were just here for quilting um, I'll try to put in there if I've put any quilting in, in my floss tube so um, I'm gonna leave it there but thank you so much for stopping and watching and I hope that something I showed today inspired you and um, because I think that uh, this community is amazing for inspiring and enabling each other. <laughs>